Hey everyone, it's Sarah. So in this pregnancy vlog, I'm gonna talk about how I failed my one hour oral glucose tolerance test. So does that mean I have gestational diabetes? Well, let's find out. So when you're pregnant, your OB provider will recommend that you take a glucose test. And normally women will take this about 24 to 28 weeks, depending on whatever your provider decides. Sometimes women take it earlier if they've had a history of it. So at 26 weeks, I had to take my one hour glucose tolerance test. And last pregnancy, cause this is my second pregnancy, I passed with flying colors and did great. And I was like, yeah, I'll take this test. And you know, I'm gonna pass. Well, I got the phone call later that day that I failed and I was absolutely shocked that I failed because during this pregnancy, I have actually been eating a lot healthier than I did with my first one. So they called and my result was 146. The cutoff at that OB office is 130. It really varies depending on your OB office, but I was 146. So I failed. So if you've never taken the one hour glucose test, what it entails is that you have to be fasting, I mean you can't eat for about two hours before the test. And you go there and you drink like this sugary concoction and there's various flavors. I always get the fruit punch. A lot of people don't like the drinks and they hate drinking it, but to me it just tastes like a flat soda. But anyways, from the time you open up the bottle, you only have five minutes to drink it. And I normally drink it pretty fast, so like less than one minute. And then you have to wait an hour. And then they draw your blood and they see how much glucose is in your blood. Now, since I failed that one hour glucose test, I had to take the three hour glucose test. And that's not exciting to do because it's a long test. So. Fortunately, I was able to make that appointment with my regular other visit, which was just in two weeks. So I had the visit and everything together. And I really recommend if you have to do this, that you do that. So for this test, the prep was a little bit different. I had to be fasting, so no food for at least 10 hours. And my appointment was at 8.15. So if you have to do this, do it in the morning time because it's a little bit better. So I quit eating at eight o'clock that night got up, went to the office. Um, I could only have water, so I was drinking lots of water just to keep hydrated. And the very first thing you have to do this time is that you have to get a blood draw. There's a total of four blood draws for this test. So you get a blood draw, that's called the fasting one. You don't have anything on your stomach, so they're gonna see what your blood sugar was. Then you drink that liquid sugary concoction again. And um, I think it has a little bit more sugar in it compared to the first one and you drink that, you have to drink it within five minutes, and then that's when the clock starts. So I drank that down pretty fast because I wanted to get this test over. And um, so every hour from that time that I drank that, they would draw blood. So I drank it at 8.30, then at 9.30, that was my first draw, then at 10.30 was my second draw, and then 11.30 was my last draw. And then I waited on my results. So two days later, they emailed me instead of calling, which it's usually good. I've noticed that if they email you rather than calling, because it's usually better news, and they emailed me and told me I had passed my test. So that meant I did not have gestational diabetes, and I was very, very happy about that. Now, to be diagnosed with gestational diabetes, out of those four results that they're looking at, two of them have to be abnormal. So that wasn't the case with me, and I'm very happy that it wasn't. But I know that a lot of women are really freaked out about this test. Like whenever you fail your one hour, like how I did, I was shocked. I did not think that that was gonna happen because it didn't happen with my first pregnancy. And I was really nervous that I was gonna get, you know, told I have gestational diabetes. So if you do have that happen, like what happened with me, you fail your one hour, now you have to take a three hour, don't stress because from what I have heard from my OB provider and other women, this is very common that a lot of women fail that one hour, but then they pass the three hour. And I've even heard of women, their one hour glucose tolerance test result being like in the 190s, but they still pass. So if you're in that situation right now, just hold out hope that you know it, things are gonna be okay. But let's say you do get diagnosed with gestational diabetes. First of all, you need to know, like it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. Don't feel like a failure because I was already starting to feel like that whenever I failed my one hour. Because really what's going on with this condition 
is the placenta is really causing you not to be able to use all that sugar so it's really hanging out in your blood and I have a whole video where I talk about gestational diabetes like what's going on on your in your body why you have it signs and symptoms and treatment those lab results and everything like that so if you do get that diagnosis I really recommend that you check that video out because I think it can help you understand what's going on in your body so I just wanted to give you all that update about what's going on and plus I really wanted to make this video for the women out there who are going to be searching you know I failed my one hour glucose tolerance test do I have diabetes what does this mean what's that three hour glucose test and just try to encourage you and let you know that yeah this happens and if you do get gestational diabetes what you need to do is just research what's going on with you and just be proactive about it and know that it's really not your fault you can blame your placenta so um, thank you all so much for watching and be sure to check out the other videos in my pregnancy blog